The samurai were the ruling class in Japan for hundreds of years. But when did the samurai actually start? The answer is actually kind of complicated, as the word samurai didn't always mean what we take it for today. The first use of this word from what I've found takes place during the Nara period. Now during this time, the Japanese armies were organized in a Chinese style conscript system. Those in this system that were classified as civilian public servants were called samurai, but obviously aren't what we typically think of. During this time, Japan was actually in an interesting state. The Yamato Emperor resided in Nara Prefecture, while the northeastern frontier wasn't under the Yamato Emperor's control. By the way, this would be the northern part of Honshu. The people that inhabited this region were called the Amishi, an ethnically diverse group consisting of Ainyu, descendants of the Jomon, and racially mixed tribes. The Amishi and the Yamato were in a constant state of conflict. The Yamato considered the Amishi barbarians, and while the Amishi didn't recognize the rule of the Yamato emperors. During the 8th century, a pacification headquarters was set up in Dua after pushing the Amishi further back. From these headquarters, they could keep watch on the Amishi and go to war when summoned. There was a couple problems though. This was a pretty remote location. And the conscript system that the Yamato currently were using required troops to be rotated in and out, and this was incredibly slow and expensive. Easily the greatest weakness that the system had was that expense. The fact that many of these men would be low skill, and at times would be slow to deploy troops, and the men that were conscripted were very reluctant to leave their farming lives for long campaigns in the military. Now that last part wasn't that much of a concern to the elites. They didn't really care about that. Mounted officers were selected from said elites, which you kind of start to see a separation from the peasant soldier and these mounted men, which of course is very similar to our concept of samurai. The warrant officers were selected from men who specifically were skilled in archery and horseback riding just furthering the idea of what would become the samurai. Now there is a lot of things to consider at this time, both for us as history lovers, but also for the Yamato leadership. Horses are expensive. Raising them, training them, so on. Archery itself is not an easy skill to develop, and so you can imagine combining the skills to do mounted archery will require a lot of training. This led to mounted warriors being only the few that had the money for a horse and the time to develop the skills. It in fact would not be so far off to say that mounted warriors were born and not made. Now as I said before, war with the Amishi was a constant affair. As a result of this common conscript foot soldier, well, he was an incredibly demoralized man, whose loyalty was shaky at best. The Yamato and their soldiers were very skilled in putting up defensive fortifications though and defending them. However, any time they were on the offense, their tactics just weren't good enough. The soldiers had a habit of breaking and running from the fight. Why? Well, it's because of the particular way that the Amishi fought. The Amishi were known to use mounted light cavalry, which was incredibly effective at hit and run tactics. Really, the Yamato foot soldiers didn't have a chance without the protection of the stockade walls. On top of that, the Amishi knew their lands very well, while the Yamato didn't. So the Yamato changed some of their tactics. Going forward, the new strategy would be to focus on mounted soldiers to push the Amishi from the area, with the foot soldiers bringing up the rear, where they would then be able to set up stockades and other defensive structures and then hold that ground. However, the conscript system could not keep up. It was just too expensive and slow. And by 792, it was abandoned in favor of just commissioning local warriors in whatever region fighting was happening in, which was just one more step towards our classic sense of samurai. Two years later, in 794, the Yamato capital moved its capital to Heian-kyo, later known as Kyoto. 
This was the start of the Heian period and where the samurai would truly rise. Now, this is where things get interesting. Anytime the Yamato Empire had a reason to have a call to arms, it had to go through the offices of the provincial governors. Any appointments to these particular posts were made among the court aristocracy. There was quite a lot of corruption during these. The one that seemed to abuse the system the most was Emperor Saga, who ruled from 809 to 823. He had 50 children with different mothers, of course, and these children, as they age, well, he sent them to different provinces. Members of the Fujiwara clan, who frequently served as imperial regents, highly encouraged this practice. For the Fujiwara, having so many royals in the capital was a threat to them. So sending them to every far corner that they could find actually made a lot of sense. Of all these extra princes and princesses, two names would stand out, the Taira and Minamoto. These clans, unlike the other landowning lords, had very strong local support and put themselves out there as people with a proud, strong lineage. Now because of their lineage, they of course had money. The type of money that could buy horses and trained archers for said horses. In time, these clans became the go-to source for these elite warriors, especially in the face of the Amishi. And they were also used to deal with local rebellions and pirates. The Yamato, or I guess we can say the imperial court at this point, would effectively abandon its conscript system entirely in favor of these clan-based warriors. They came to realize that it was just simply easier and more efficient to privatize its military need from these reliable sources. As you've probably figured out, this is when the samurai fully started. And while you could point to earlier periods where there was some of that samurai-like way of fighting, I feel the Heian period and the birth of the Taira and Minamoto clans is the real birth of the samurai. Anyway, if you like this video, please slash that like button and let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'll see you next time.